welcome to another episode of Where Love Touches People. I'm joined today by our beloved Pastor Honey again uh, to continue with our theme this, uh, I guess, in this period of sports and entertainment um, and how, I guess, uh, or I guess what the Bible says about uh, these things, uh, especially um, as we talk about uh, these areas. So, I guess the entertainment industry, uh, sports, uh, these things um, as a sphere where where we can be a good influence to the people around us. Um, so, how are you doing, Om? I'm doing fine, Andrew. How about you? Uh, I'm pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, just saw you this morning, actually. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what other things are you like doing, Om? Well, in my daily life, you know, beside uh, what I can can consider spiritual things, you know, I'm a pastor, so I'm I'm doing praying, preaching, studying, preparing messages, etc. You know, but truly, if I you ask me about my hobby, I like to read and watch movie. You know. Okay. So. Yeah. What sorts of um, books or movies do you read? Well, what kind of movies? It's usually it's like a. Uh, drama movies and you know adventure whatsoever you know but i i left a horror movie you know because i don't think so that that's my my field you know because mm-hmm. why why i watch movie you know because uh it will give me some knowledge you know to understand and to educate my you know my brain also you know, to to understand more people and reality outside the four walls of church, you know. So I don't want to become a, a irrelevant pastor. So I need to know what's happening outside the outside the, the the walls of the church, because when I understand it, you know, everything that I give counsel, you know, teaching and everything, it will really bless the people there. Not not only the church people but i believe you know right now we are online you know so i believe it will bless the world you know Mm -hmm. because everything that that i give or share or teach you know i think it's applicable with everything happening in this world yeah yeah i like when you say um uh you try to be relevant i remember when you had a message you shared on facebook that quoted um crash landing on you oh i see i see <laughs> all right yeah korean oh drama. yeah i'm i'm one of the what you call that one korean drama <laughs> uh favorite uh, watcher perhaps yeah? yeah yeah that's one of my favorite though. yeah so how do you i guess in your busy schedule how do you find time i guess to do these things that you like uh Let's see, I put my hobby and entertainment below my priorities and my routines. Because uh, just in case, just in case I have my spare time and I feel that I need it, you know, that uh, and, and I, I, I do my hobbies and entertainment, it's like uh, if I need my me time, I do it. Mm. Usually in my spare time, you know, I spend also with my wife, you know, with my my grandkids, you know, with my children, with Tiffany and everything, you know. But I think I put I put my 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 hobby and entertainment, you know, at the last page like that, you know, if I have time and I do nothing, yeah. you know, so I do it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. So I guess um today we are talking about uh sports and entertainment. Uh, what are your thoughts on these two things? I guess especially in regards to what the Bible says about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically, if you following my teaching, you know, I teach about the kingdom of God theology. And the heart of this teaching, you know, you will, you will find that every believer must infiltrate and mastery the seven spheres of influence. Let me explain about the seven spheres of influence. Number one, government, economic, education. Number four is faith or religious, you know, religions. Number five, family. Number six, media. And number seven is celebration. Mm -hmm. If you know about celebration, it contains sport, 
entertainment and arts and yeah. i believe tonight we talk about you know celebration this one yeah but the problem i found out is like this you know it's always in self identity so many christian artists and christian athletes you know start their journey as an artist or an athlete you know with humility but in the way up to success they got lost with all fame and fortunes that they got mm -hmm. for example in sport spears you know so many footballers or soccer player when they score goal they show the words on their t-shirts you know i remember kaka from brazil mm. you know he opened you know his his his, his uniform and we can read in the viewer can read the word say i love jesus or perhaps jesus is lord or say meaning words that show they worship god while they are doing sport sport is the way of worship god mm. so there is no uh, dichotomy between sports and you know religious you know actually yeah. if you you are you know you know you are know who you are in christ exactly you do whatever you do you know that's show your faith i remember andrew mm -hmm. of olympic 1924 you know we, we talk about right now is an olympic in tokyo yeah you know the yeah. most <laughs> the most confusing is like you know it's written there 2020 tokyo <laughs> olympic and right now is 2021 <laughs> yeah but this one happening in olympic 1924 in paris mm. there was a running athlete from scotland named eric lidl you know lidl is the son of christian missionaries had been born in china in 1902 and lived there until he was five when he returned to Britain to be educated. You know, in, in Olympic 1924, he famously refused to run on a Sunday, ruling him out of the 100 meters race to which he was best, you know, suited. You know. Oh, wow. Instead, he took part in the 400 meters race and against the odd still you know won a gold medal you know soon after his olympic triumph Lidl finished his study and returned to china to become a missionary mm. eric Lidl showed his triumphant faith boldly and victoriously glorified the lord you know his story you can watch in the movie title like this the chariots fire yeah it's quite interesting how one uh, sport athlete can show his faith to the world mm -hmm. and the world admire him so much you know? wow. let's talk about in the sports sphere in the entertainment sphere mm -hmm. let's talk about music industry mm -hmm. you know there are several musicians in the past and in the present that show their faith Let's talk about one, one thing that concerned me about showing faith without considering their lifestyle. Yep. Uh, let me quote this name, Israel mm. Hilton, you know, very famous and anointed artist. His song traveling all over the world and helped so many people in their relationship with the Lord. But in recent five years ago, after one year he divorced his wife and remarried with one of his singers or his follower you know his life actually he showed it that his lifestyle you know, is not matched with his faith mm. his lifestyle does destroy his faith yeah. that's why so many uh, believers you know finally they rejected you know israel and and voila, the, the, for the, the effect of that divorce and remarriage, you know, uh, I think he, he did not come, you know, into the, into the pulpit or into the stage, you know, for, for several years, you know, because mm. of that issue, you know. Yeah, yeah. But for, Israel's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I remember it, um, when it happened as well, when the news came out, yeah. it was very, uh, it's disappointing for a lot of people, yeah. And like Absolute. I know that he's human, you know, he's not yeah, he's, he's not perfect. 
but still as someone who a lot of people look up to yeah it is quite a uh, quite challenging and one yeah. more thing you know so interesting you know when i that's why i read a lot of news and i i watch also you know from youtube and everything you yeah. know i another huge ar- artist in the music industry mm. let's name it kanye west mm-hmm. you know after he declared his faith following jesus christ you know just recently we heard that his marriage was over you know with kim kardashian mm. how his journey you know how his faith journey will be we have no idea and still in question mark you know but i believe one thing when we see uh, so many people fell you know in this uh, music industry or you know where a famous and they full of fame and uh, you know and glorious uh, past or whatever you know they just need our prayers Mm. You know, our prayer need to sustain all of them. You know, the Christian artists. Hopefully, they can stand tall against the odds, against the temptation that he faced or their face. You know, in he, in their daily life. You know, <laughs> you know how great the influence could be if the artist truly match their lifestyle with their faith. We talk about millions of their followers of Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. You know, if their idol declare Jesus is Lord, I believe millions will follow his or her step to follow Jesus also. Yeah. Even we don't know how deep or sh- shallow you know their faith is. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine, you know, Andrew, if 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 the group called Bangtan Boys, you know, <laughs> you know exactly BTS, yep. <laughs> you know, use a title of new song, perhaps like this: "Faith That Changed Me," you know, "Faith That Changed Us," and it contains their faith to Jesus. Wow! I believe this world will be different. Mm. You know, we have no idea what kind of faith that they have. You know. But just recently, the interview, uh, the the BTS interview with Jimmy Fallon, you know, yeah. one of the group, I think is uh, RM, you know, say thank God, you know, I I don't oh, know, yeah. you know, it's 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 just uh, uh, what you call it one, it's just uh, just a word, or yeah. or perhaps that's that is the you know the small uh, declaration of. Their faith, you know. Mm, yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if the army of BTS will follow their idols to embrace Christianity? Wow! I believe there is something great, you know, happening in this in this world, you know. Yeah. So if we talk about entertainment, also entertainment sphere, not only in music, yeah, but only uh, also in movie. Mm-hmm. You know, this is I'm. I've been encouraged when I see. Uh, film or movie industry, mm. you know, lately. Why? Because since five or six years ago, Christian movie producers, you know, are daring to make movies to show their Christian faith. For example, mm. Andrew, have you watched The Passion by Mel Gibson? You yeah, know? yeah. I think they... That movie was excellent. That movie can, you know, can. Tear your uh, can 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 tear your hearts, you know, mm. and will bring you on me, you know. That movie is you know is so anointed. Oh, recently I watched also that movie, the the title "Miracles from Heaven," you mm. know, starred by Jennifer Garner, who mm. quite famous also, and yeah. Queen Latifah also, you know. Another movies like uh, "Fireproof" and "God Is Not Dead." Yeah. The story were excellent, excellent, you know, super, and always glorify the Lord. And mm. I believe right now so many producers make Christian movie, and that's encourage us, because people people like 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 us sometimes you know we need to see from the other side, you know, not only from the pulpit, mm-hmm. but from the media, you know, there is a declaration of faith from from movie and from the industry specifically from you know entertainment industry mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah well i think it's uh it's quite interesting how 
um, I guess people who once they taste a bit of fame, a bit of wealth, mm -hmm. it's very easy to be tempted to, I guess, to fall away from their faith, yeah? yeah. How do you, th uh, okay, okay, I guess, how can, I guess we be, or maybe for them, how can someone be a successful artist uh, without compromising their faith? Wow, good question. You know, I remember one, uh, one movie called, uh, the title is A Few Good Men. Mm -hmm. You know, the starring is a uh, very, very famous stars, you know, but I remember one, uh, one, uh, what you call that one, is uh, one clip, you know, when Jack Nicholson shouted to Tom Cruise, you know, with this famous word, you cannot handle the truth. You know what, Andrew? The truth says, you know, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ live in me. That's written in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, and whatever you do, whether in the word, you know, whether in word or deed, do it all, all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And this is the truth. Mm. You know. The truth is our lives must give glory to the Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. If we are, if you are an artist or a mu musician, you know, we must show our lifestyle match with our declaration of faith. If you are, if we are an athlete, we must show our competition spirit, not against other but against our yesterday. So it means today we are better than yesterday. Mm. That is the one that we need to compete. We don't need, we don't have any uh, competitor actually. You know, we compete with ourselves. Yeah. Today is better than yesterday. Mm -hmm. So if we, you know, uh, if we train ourselves, you know, to compete, you know, with ourselves, I believe you will be excellent in everything mm -hmm. because you you will find you know that God will bless you because that is not is not a uh, very selfish but that is selflessness you know when you you not considering others as a competitor yeah. that is very important mm -hmm. yeah well thank you very much Om, for your sharing today I really um I think when you talked about the spheres of influence, I think it's really, um, I guess, insightful to me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was wondering, like, will you be explaining more about this in your Sunday sermons? Or? <laughs> I will, I will. You will? <laughs> no worries, I will. <laughs> because when I'm preparing this one, you know, I'm thinking about the seven spheres of, of influence, seven spheres of uh, society, you know. Yep. I got so many you know so many ideas to share yeah wow so for the listeners who are yes. listening to this episode <laughs> make sure you tune in to the sunday service as well hallelujah <laughs> do you have any um any other words you like to share with the listeners Om? okay uh let me give you take away this one you know you must have ambition if you want to be great like these athletes that competes in tokyo olympic do you know that some of them have been practiced and have been trained for four years, day mm -hmm. and night, day and night, just for nine minutes game, you know, in the competition event. Yeah. So you have to know exactly. You cannot just have ambition without paying the price of that ambition. You know, every ambition, will come out with a high price. Do you want to pay it or not? That's why don't give up if you have not reached there yet. You have to put a fight to conquer your fear and frustration. Because sometimes our fear and our frustration, that is the two hurdles that always you know, hold us in the same place. And perhaps, perhaps, this is the truth that you need to hold 
as your holy ambition. Once again, you can, you must have ambition, but please have your holy ambition. Mm-hmm. My highest ambition and only ambition is to see Jesus Christ is glorified. I live for that, and so do you. Thank you, Andrew, for your question, and I believe, I hope, I pray that everybody that listen this podcast will be blessed. Amen. Thank you very much, Om, for your time. Thank you.